14th day of February is a feminist day and today we are going to remember all the good women that has come and that that is today so today I have this story that I have titled Idia Nye Oba Esige Omunori Oba We Oe Ore Edo We Non Kwefwa It is so sad to see how our lives has changed. A mere saint could be branded as paganism. Native Africans have got to wake up from this act of self-destruction. This act that is killing our own heritage and custom. It is a fact that we needed hygiene to sanitize the health area of our lives. And it is a fact too that we needed iron sheets to roof our houses that the rain might not come in. And I must admit also that it was also a good fact. It is a fact that we needed iron sheets. Yes, it was a fact. And it is also a bigger fact that we needed the white arms to defend our territories from evil-minded people. But our language, our tongue, our culture, and our beliefs we should have preserved. We should not have allowed this to be compromised or to be conquered by the new ideology of some strangers. This is how our story begins with a woman of this character, a woman that we are called Idia. Idia that became a wife to Oba Ozolwa, Numokwe. Idia 
became the mother of Oba Esigi. She begot Oba Esigi. She was the mother of Oba Esigi. Our story begins of a long time ago with Idia Niyoba Esigi. Omonori Obawe Oe Oredo Ve Uko Nokwa Nara Atiye 1500 Ve Unokwa Nara Atiye Igodo Mi Godo Ve Renede Idia When she was young She had believed in Osanobwa The God Almighty She believed that Osanobwa must be up somewhere above in the skies. She had faith and we powers with great determination that could be that could be compared to that of a goddess and to another great woman, a great mother from this same forgotten land of Igodomi Godo. This other great woman of faith that was the mother of the first Oba of Ore Oredo. And her name was the Handy Wo. I must confess to you all today that the greatest part of our history as a people has been played out by the Igodomi Godo women, and she was one of them. No wonder Ezekiah had said in Ikoka that everyone is shouting, Snake, snake, Wagenye, Wagenye. That everyone is shouting snake, snake, snake. And before the men could go fetch for sticks, the women had killed the snake. But does it matter whether it is the men that killed the snake or whether it is the women that killed it? Is it not for the snake to die? Let him go back to his palace in Ore Oredo. After all, things have always been this way. This expression tells a lot of how great the ego of women has always been. This is the bitter truth, but it is the most significant of them all. The truth that the ego of Migo do women has always played the greatest part of our history. These same women were offered as sacrificial lamb, even before their very own sons would be made Oba back in the days. This was the complexity of superiority and inferiority that women has always and continue to play the most significant part of our lives as a human being and as a people. But no one will ever admit that once upon a time in the forgotten land of Igodomi Godo, women, women were once king. That is why today, the 14th day of February 2019, we would remember all these great women that had played this most vital and most significant part of our history. Number one was a handy woe. She was a single mother that single-handedly raised up a son, Odin, that child that could not cry at birth, so he could not be given a proper name. That child they simply called Odin. But Odin would later become the first Oba of the Old Testament of the Oba's dynasty. His name was called Oba Eweka the First. If she was the mother of Oba Vorame, the kingdom, I tell you, would not have fair. Oba Vorame would not have been made to forfeit his kingship and be deported to Calabar. This event that would bring an end to the Old Testament of the Oba's dynasty. The reign of the first dynasty of Oba's came to an end with Oba Vorame.
Then we remember a mother. She was an angel, a good one that breaks yoke. If you ever see a mother, then you are free. Ewe Bonoza, she was a great philosopher. She was the mother of Oba Ewakwe. She discovered the woman called Ide. Ide was a baron. She was a queen. She was a wife to the son of Ewe Bonoza, Oba Ewakwe. Oba Ewakwe, the unfulfilled that was never supposed to be a king in the land of Igoromi Godo, but he would be redeemed by the blood of an innocent woman, Eden. And to so many, many other women and our mothers from the land of Igoromi Godo that has made the glory to live on. We remember and we appreciate you all, dead or alive. You have kept this glory and you have made this kingdom to go on. But if by greed this kingdom may fall and fail, just know you have been the power that has made us last this long. You have always been the best. You have done and you have done and you have been the best. So we say thank you. So our story continue with Idia Ne Iye Oba Esigi. Idia was a very beautiful, intelligent girl child who had wanted more than she was told in fable days. She had thought and she had believed that there is a supernatural God that cannot be seen with the naked eyes. But still, this God is everywhere. She also had beliefs that somewhere across the vast oceans lies another world with another kind of people. Idia would talk to herself. Idia would talk into the air with beliefs that there is a supernatural ears that could hear her. But there must be a God somewhere that has created all the universe around her. She would think. And just about that time, that she would run through the narrow footway in the deepest evergreen rainforest in the heart of West Africa, in the forgotten lands of Igodomigodo, that she had discovered the white man, the Portuguese, had came. The Igotoki, as we had called them in Igodo, back in the days. This event would erase her fear so a little doubt disappeared and Otto I was restored. A total faith in God Almighty, Osanova, for it was true what she had imagined. Above in the skies, there is a God. And across the vast oceans lies another dry land with trees and various kinds of animal species and most especially another kind of people. But during the time of India, the world around Africa was at war. Africa and Africans had lived behind the actual time. There was war coming from every, every angle of the earth, east, west, north and south. But the black man in the deep rainforest did not know how the world around him has changed. Idianiye Obayasige was born in the time of trouble. The time the Igodomigodo kingdom was also twined in wars and unrest with herself and our neighbor. We could as well say Idianiye Obayasige was born under the bad sign, the sign of the bad omen, for it was with determination she had outlived the e law signs. And my prayers today to every one of us 
is that we will be able to live out of bad omen and ill luck, irrespective of the time and the season and the signs that we were born. So on the first day of October 2018, I went to visit India near by Esige Facial Mask at the British Museum in London, United Kingdom. And this was what I wrote in regard. After a long observation of the facial mask of India and the brutality expressed on it, from our warfare and life encounter, I came to these conclusions that India Niyoba Esige might have died at the age of 45. She could have lived, she couldn't have lived longer than that. She was partially blinded on her left eye, a bruise she might have sustained from her warfare. She could have been a captain of a battalion of soldiers, soldiers which include the Portuguese and her son, Esige. Idiani Yoba Esige might have been married at the age of 14, and she might have had Esige the following year. And afterward, she knew no rest. I can guarantee you this from the look in her far sharp mask. I made a measurement of the mask with my hand, with my, with my fingers open like this. To tell you how tiny it was. Idiani Yoba Esige shows signs of a woman in distress and in pains of motherhood. A mother that will never go to sleep because her son has not returned back home. But the most misinterpreted version of this whole story about Idia Niyoba Esige was that she was a very fetish woman. That she could have been having a diabolical power to cast evil spell on those she hates. In this manner, she could be compared to Esau. Remember the story I told you of Esau, the hostile girl child, that could be born to carry out her fetish desire at all costs to change an order and to have a will. But I tell you, but I tell you truthfully, that is a misinterpreted version of Idia. Idia Niyoba Esige. From all that I have found out about her. Well, may you call me? When I visited the museum, the British Museum, was that she had believed in God. She had believed in God Almighty Osanoba. And she was wise enough to know the best weapons of warfare. She was wise enough to know who her enemies could be and who her friends could be and who her ally could be. Idia had saved the Igodomigodo Empire some 500 years plus ago with the help and I get her. Ikpotoki. Ige. Ige di, di mask. When Ige di mask. Ina do bege wik potoki. Bege wik potoki na yaki. Di. All these ones. Ikpotoki. Because she has believed. In these people. But okay, she had used the, 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 the best weapons of warfare to defend the land. So these days I wonder how people intend to defend this land in the fetish way. But instead of embracing the true, true, faithful way that Idia had believed in. The same, the same tactics that Idia had used. This is how the faithful of the, of the forgotten land of Igodomigodo was branded evil 
For if you are in your basic, I had only believed in God. She had believed in, she had believed in Osanoba and she had believed in the weapons of the white man. And his ideas that had enabled him to travel from a very far away land into their land. So that is why Idia herself gave her life to the to follow the white, the ways of the white man. And when she became a wife to Oba Ozolwa, Numokwe, she would still go on that tutorial of the Ipotoki. And in the same vein, she had encouraged Oba Ozolwa to, to trade with the white man, with the Portuguese. She gave her only son to the Portuguese and ensured that he was baptized in the faith of the Portuguese. The Portuguese had appreciated her effort and vowed to defend her in all her wars against her enemy. And so it was. You see, at the, at the British Museum, there were some statues. You see these statues? They were the Portuguese. This is the Portuguese with the firearms, with the white arms. So all along, where is my pain? So all along, I came to realize. So all along, I came to realize that the Portuguese had made an agreement to defend this land a long time ago. This agreement that was struck by India, Niyoba Esigi. The Portuguese are helped build this land. The Portuguese know better. You see, these these were some some presents, some some task that was shaping into into figures. Figures were made inside, but I know this is a Portuguese. This was also a leopard, an ivory. And every of a leopard, it was beautiful. It was really, really beautiful. It was truly beautiful. It was nice. It was really nice. If in the 1500s, a woman had been able to save this land, not by charm or spiritualism like people would want to say, but by wisdom of accepting fact, this warrior queen had knew then that to win, you have got to have sophisticated weapons of warfare. This truth that makes a man to be free. That today in Igodo we say, Okumayo kode sokme idia niye obayasigi owoja ayasimi woman. But now that the enemies are coming back again, they are trooping in into the land, into the into the into the, the, the small land that is left of Igodomigodo, of the forgotten land of the of Igodomigodo and the Igodo people. Now that the enemies are coming back again, what must we do? The eyes of our ancestors are shedding blood. The gods are restless, all because of the belly of the greedy man. Today, foreign invaders has taken over the few local areas that are left of the forgotten land of Igodomigodo. This piece of land 
will be gone if we do not take action. The story I tell you today might become the only thing left of the people of Igodomi Godo in a hundred years to come if we do not shake things up now. If you go to Urodigbe, in Oriyo, one local government area of Edo State, foreign fighters are there. Owa, Abudu, and its environs, some strange people have invaded the land. And no one dare to ask who these people are. Go to Ekboba Oha, Akoko Edo, Ego, Esan, Ovia, Owa, Uonde, Etako, Igwebe, all around. All around in the little land that Igodomigodo has become. It is totally invaded. But 500 years ago, she had defended this land with wisdom, with her might, and with blood. This land was defended. But today there is nothing, no one. Everybody has gone. Everybody has run away. They are all gathering together in a little portion called Ore Oredo. This is what Ikudomigodo has become because of the greed of some people. I tell you today. It is time that Ore Oredo should set the other local free. It was with love that they had left their homes and said, But the best from these locals have since then never returned back home. The big monster of Sogan at Ore Oredo has swallowed them up. Everyone that left their villages, everyone that left their local area, everyone that left their community to Ore Oredo never returned back home. They never returned. All the best never returned back home. No one is no one ever went back to build their home. No one ever went back to build their villages. No one ever remember their grandparents. No one even knows the landmark of their father's land. This is because the, the monster at Ore Oredo has swallowed them all. Ore Oredo has become the problem of the locals area that is around. She has refused to let them grow. She has this intention to keep their history and their destiny. That is why today, in the forgotten lands of Igodomigodo, no one realizes that Ugoneki, Ugo, was once a world marketplace, just as the name implies. No one knows that Ego was the stool that begot the Obas dynasty. No one knows, no one cares to know. So let Ego remain as a village and be taken over by the invaders. But no, but Ego was his tool that begot the Obas dynasty. No one cares to know that Uro Nigwe, Uro Nigwe, lies the covenant between the between between the dry land and the waters, the earth. That if if the waters from the seas, the earth, gets to the eye of the Olokun, we will all return back to the waters, the earth. But no one cares to know, no one cares to know now that it was by expansion and by territorial defense that Oba Ogwala had sent his children away into the inner land of Igodomigodo to become sons and daughters like every other one of us. Owa was originated, Abudu, Ika, they were all formed into local communities and states with hope that they would become bigger and stronger. They will become communities and states 
on that Igodomigodo to wage war against our enemies. But where are they today? Where are they to get today? They are all gradually disappearing. They have been taken over by strangers. This is what we have become in this land, in this forgotten land of Igodomigodo. And this is what we have become as the Igodo people. Igobaze iyo iyo oge uwa that is today called Igobazuwa was formed as an ally of the Oba of Oreyogedo that wisdom and loyalty might be acclaimed to the head of all the Oba king of Igodomigodo. But why now is Oreyogedo not letting all these other extended local er area around her to grow and expand on their own? Why would the man at Oreyogedo, maybe at Ogbe, in Oredo, will become a billionaire? At the expense of everybody, but no one will ever become a, a thousand, will ever make it to a hundred thousand. At Uhonde, no one will ever make a thousand at a goal. This is what we are, this is what we have become an enemy to our very own self. Why has Ode Oredo taken everything with greed? But this greed, I tell you, is an explosive fire that will one day explode in the belly of its consumer. Everyone wants to live and maybe live without respecting the foundation with which our land was built, undermining the things that really and truly matters in our existence. The other day, Governor Obaseki had said, he was going to build an ultra modern museum at the Oba Palace in Ore Oredo. I was shocked at his statement at first. Then I thought, this guy must be crazy. Something must be wrong somewhere. Does he even know what an ultra modern museum is? And I wrote on his Facebook page, We would protest if you try to start an ultra modern museum at the Ore Oredo Palace of the Oba of Benin. Ore Oredo alone is not Igodomi Godo. Igodomi Godo is a vast, vast land of the Igodo people and it needs to be developed. For it was by pride that we had stood and we are fight for our, our culture our beliefs and our heritage so we will not stand we will not stay here and allow people to destroy it all because of, of greed for long ago i have put up a proposal that igodomigodo ultra modern library and museum will be built at ego the stool that begot the Oba's dynasty we must become determined people, believing in the dreams and hope of our forebear. Everyone that are squeezing for a space at Ode Oredo must return back to their local area. They must call for development of their local area. There must be school at all the local area of Igodomigodo. There must be hospital. In all the local area, there must be secretariat. There must there must be a, a tertiary institution. There must be hospital. There must be somewhere where they can be attended to that they do not need to leave their local area and go to Ori or Edo. They must be encouraged to go back home. Or we are going to lose it all. They must be able to defend their father's land. Oreoredo is not ready. So she must be left alone. And the name of Edo must be taken away from our history. As a, as a name that is less significant. 
we will change the name of our state. And those states, we will change that name into the name of a more heroic person. Or better still, by my proposal, let us return back to the lost land of Igodomigodo, the promised land. Sometimes I ask myself, do we really know the significance of our of our the Bini artifact? Or are we just anticipating for their return? Just to make other fee we are taking or we are talking. Do we really know the reality? of the artifact and their role in our history. For example, Idia, she was born in the time of unrest. She lived growing up in a troubled land. She was married to Obazola at a very tender age. She had trouble in the household of Obazola amongst the other wives. Her son was having trouble growing up among his father's children. She had went to several wars. The wars that her son would wage against his own brother, Arwa, and the Igala people. She had no rest because she had lived all her life in troubled zone. I suspect she might have died from severe injury sustained in our many wars. Several fascia mask was made in our honor, but during the Benin Punitive War, they were all cut out the way. All about Idia has been trouble, travail, and pain. In my humble opinion, I would say, if by any means some of these artifacts would be returned back to Igodomigodo by loan or by to totality, let the Idia facial mask not come back home. We would go and visit her from where she is seated, but let her not come back home for what she means and not what she represents. I took pictures of India fascia mask to detail my experience at the British Museum and to keep the studies alive. The ancient people of Igodomigodo. The story of Igodomigodo. The people of Igodo. Back in the days, it used to be very interesting. We play these songs. We sing these songs to remember and not to forget our history. Oh, 
So in my conclusions, today, I'll conclude like this. With the Benin artifacts stolen and the shipped abroad and are displayed around the World Museum and it makes us feel unhappy, robbed and cheated. So I suggest this way forward. We should block all the loopholes and challenge anyone that are siphoning our common wealth for their personal greed. I mean anyone and that include me. For every day, our artifact has been stolen and shipped abroad. But now, by our very own people, our people are stealing the wealth of our land to buy houses and build industries and even bank abroad. We need to prevent and protect what we have got before it is stolen. This is the only way forward. These are artifacts that we must protect and preserve now. Our Bini artifacts can be worthwhile only if we know their values to our history. No one man is bigger than our heritage. No one man is bigger than our heritage, for it is with pride and honor that we defend our heritage and our history. The best must come to the Benin Empire. The best must come to the, the Godomi Godo state and nation. 
and to all the aboriginal people around the world and not to some selected few the great emperor of, of Igodomi Godo kingdom he had once said and I quote that I shall do as ask my fathers and I shall do as ask by my mothers but if by virtue of his deeds of good faith I did or did not do as ask the sin shall not fall upon me for I, I am not in bondage to saints neither am I in bondage to any man but you can as well hold this message responsible if you deem it so that something has to be given and not me for I am only a porter of a godly message so the story that I tell you today the story of Idia Nijia Oba Esige Oha Oge Idia Nijia Oba Esige Kegi Diye Mare Gele Gele Oya No Na Ya Simi Ewa Oya Aya Simi Ewa May our identity never be mistaken May our identity never be a mistaken identity And may our good intentions never again in ego do migo do or as ego do people be misunderstood by anyone for we are god's children we are god's children and we will remain until the end of time the children and the people of god thank you i humbly thank you i bless god bless you all may you live in peace have a wonderful valentine's day i bless i god bless you all Thank you. I hope to see you all again, all again. And again, like I have told you, it's the best way that we must go. The best tactics that we must use. We know that some people have brought in, they have shipped in so many foreigners. So they have shipped in invaders into the land of the, of the forgotten Igodomi Godo people. We know this government has shipped in people into the forgotten land of Igodomi Godo people. They are invaders. They are waiting to strike. But we must push back. We must push back. And the first way to start this pushback is to change this government. Vote at Mr. Muhammadu Buhari. I encourage you, I will encourage every one of you to give it a try with Mr. Atiku Abubakar, the PDP presidential aspirant. Thank you. My name will remain Mr. Brighto Wenosagi. And go and goodbye. God bless you. Thank you all.